Hi there. Uh, you must have seen the other two videos that I have. One of them is about place values from ones, tens, hundreds, then thousands, ten thousand, hundred thousand, then millions, and then the billions. Okay? In that we learned how to read these numbers. Then we also had another one where we learned to write the numbers, the bigger numbers. Now today we need to go on to numbers or place values that are smaller than one. Okay, I'll teach you a new strategy so you'll be able to remember what comes where. Okay, now you guys know that the ones place means there's one of something. And when you have ten of them, let's say you had one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten, you could have one, ten, with ten of these dots in it. Okay? So you know that, that 10 of this makes one of this. And 10 of these make one of this. Well, what happens when, an, when you have to kind of break this one into smaller parts? It has a number, it has a name to it, doesn't it? Let's see what it is. That's the ones place. And so if you, let's say pretend that you had a big birthday cake. All right, and you have, we're going to cut it into 10 parts. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So here are the ten parts. What would you call one of these parts? You're going to give it a name. It can't go nameless. Here's what happens. Think about one as being the only one. He has no brothers, no sisters, nobody. Okay? So he's the only one. However, look at this guy, tens. He has a cousin called tenths. How do we write that? T. E N T H S. There we go. So here's a little rainbow coming around from tens to tens, and these two guys are cousins. What the tens place tells is that if you have ten of these, that makes one of these. How would you do it as a number? How would you write it and read it as a number? So let's say this was our number. So what would you do? You would go three tens. That's it. So people would know what it is. Let's say your number then was, there we go. Sometimes you could have a number like this. How would you read this number? You know, when you start doing math, you don't read the point as a point. We call it and in a decimal number. So we'd say one and six tenths. So you simply go to the number in the decimals place value and then you go up and read what place value it is. So that's, the ones place, tens and tens. And also, here's hundreds. He has a cousin as well. But guess what his name is? His name is hundreds. See this TH at the end, the TH is, that's what differentiates. This one is T-E-N-S. This is tens. Hundreds, hundreds. Okay, so he has a cousin called the hundreds. And how would you read that number? Let's go here. All right. Let's say it was this and this. So again, what you're going to do is you're going to read the number and then you're going to just say what place value it is. Don't worry about the first place value. You just go to the very end and read that place value. So this would be 26 hundredths. As easy as that. Now you might say, well, what would happen if... This was a zero. Do I need to say something over here? No, you don't. Just read the number. What does this look like? It's six. Six hundreds. And you know what? You have done this in money. If you look at money, it's all the dollars come on this side, the cents come on this side. So you are used to reading numbers like that. Let's say if it was this. Okay, how would you read this number? That would be 5 and 94 hundreds. Okay, that's as easy as that. And the last one we do is thousands. We don't want to go any further than that because in real life we really don't use that much. Okay, so let's see. Erase this. And this time, let's go with him. That's thousands. He has a cousin called thousands. So we go all the way across from here, and there is the thousands. 
Again, don't miss the THS. That's what differentiates this from this. And how do we read those numbers? Let's say your number was, okay? So you're going to just read the number as it is and tell the last place value. Not this, not this, just the last one. So your number here is 584 thousands. And that's all you're going to read. What if you we send a couple of these guys on vacation? First, let's send him over on vacation. Well, then you still do the same thing. Read it as a number and tell the last place value. So that would be 504 thousands. And let's try to add numbers on this side now. What if it was... There we go. That's our number. All right. Now you already know how to read this side of it. That's 616. And remember what I said? Instead of saying decimal or point, we read this as and. So this would be 606 and 504 thousands. See how easy that becomes? And when you look at these numbers, don't get worried about how many place values there are. Read the number, just tell the last place value. Let's try a couple more. What about this, 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 and this? Okay, ready? Let's go. Let's start from here. That's one and seven thousands. That's it. So see how easy it becomes to read all these numbers. Now, sometimes what happens is you have to write the number not only in decimal form, but you also have to write it as a fraction. And if you write what you say, you will get the exact fraction. Let's say our first number was this. And how are we going to read it? Three tenths. So now you have a fraction, which means you have a numerator and a denominator. So your numerator is three. And your denominator is going to be this place value. Tens, just write the number 10, like so. So this and this is the exact same thing. No difference at all. What about hundreds? Same thing here. Suppose it was, no, we better stick to the zero here because we'll come to the whole numbers later. Uh, there we go. This is 56 hundreds. So as a fraction, what we're going to write is 56. And what's a denominator going to be? Because it's the hundreds, you want to write 100. 100. And that's it. Same with the thousands. If we had a number like 715, and we read this as 715 thousands, now let's write this as a fraction. Same thing again, you're going to write the number on, as a numerator, draw your line underneath, and then your denominator is going to be the place value where it's at. So it would be 715 over 1000. There we go. That was pretty easy reading those numbers, wasn't it? So to summarize, what do we have? One is the only one. No brothers, no sister, nobody at all. Ten does have a cousin called tens. So we have a rainbow going across and the very first place value next to the decimal is the tens place value. Same with the hundreds. He has a cousin. Let's see what the cousin's name is. Hundreds. And so this place value will be called hundreds. And lastly, thousands also has a cousin called thousands. And he is belongs in the third place value over here. And that's about all you need to know in your usual math. You will use this sometimes for in area or perimeter, sometimes measuring in millimeters and centimeters, sometimes for money. So you do need to know this. Okay? I hope you have fun with it. Stop the video when you want to, rewind it, look at it again, and give yourself different numbers. Try practice reading numbers like this, maybe even writing them as fractions, and the place values uh, smaller than one, and fractions will become a lot easier for you. Have fun.